These are some of the finest Australian songs ever written, and together they tell a vast amount of the Australian story. Born in 1867 into a life of poverty on the Australian goldfields, Lawson died 55 years later, a destitute, having lived much of his life as a tortured soul, wrestling with profound deafness, alcoholism, depression, and deep personal unhappiness. And although by the end of his life, he was almost totally deaf. It was his ear for the Australian vernacular and the Australian character that caused him to become cherished as an Australian national treasure. Lawson's writing was immensely popular in his day and his funeral in 1922 was the biggest ever seen in Australia. Lawson scholar, Professor Colin Roderick, observed that Henry was an innovator he broke with that overlay of Victorian literary styles and wrote as Australia spoke. <coughs> His brain, with its amazing memory and clever observation, picked up the stories and the lives and the drama of his time, and his literary gifts immortalised them into prose and verse. Our land is gone with cattle now Across the Queensland border He's left us in dejection now Our thoughts are out of order He's left us in dejection now Our thoughts are out Smile when things are out. 
clatter and the fly in twain was torn. Twas the soiled rag of a tatter of the tent where I was born. Does it matter which is stranger, brick or tent or calico? There was one born in a manger 1900 years ago. For my beds were camp beds and tramp beds and damp beds. And my beds were dry beds on drought-stricken ground. Hard beds and soft beds and wide beds and narrow. For my beds were strange beds, the wide world around. Lawson's father, Niels Hertzberg Larsen, was a Norwegian sailor who jumped ship in Melbourne, where he met Louisa Albury, an Australian born of an English family. Together, they set off on a 300 kilometer trek in a horse and cart to try for fortune on the gold fields. After about a year and a half with no luck and with his name anglicised to Peter Lawson, <clears throat> Nielsen gave up the gold and the family shifted to a tent in a paddock near Louisa's parents' hotel at a, pa a place called New Pipe Clay. I had a dreamy recollection of the place as a hut. Some of my people said it was a tent on a good frame for father was a carpenter, but mother tells me that he built a bathroom in front, lined with screen, papered with newspapers, with a whitewashed floor, with mats, a fireplace in front, by the side a door, and a glass door, a relic of the rush, I suppose. The tent was the same that I was born in, on the Grenfell Goldfields years before, and brought back 
to pipe play. The Aubreys, Louise's family, were important to Henry and their stories feature in his as to the hills and gullies and all the people of his first 16 years in Gulgul. Granny lived in an old weatherboard place. I don't remember if the old lady had any special points about her, except her nose and chin. But I was extremely fond of her until the day she died. When I was about four, and my brother too, we had a song about Auntie, Auntie to Come. Sometimes, Mother would tell us that if we sang that song, Auntie would come. And we'd sing it, and sure enough, she'd come in while we were singing it, and rush in and kiss us. We thought it very wonderful. The bright gleam of gold drew Peter all his days with little luck. Some say that when he picked the place for the family selection, he chose it more for the hope of finding gold under it than being able to farm on it. But to the young Lawson, it was magic. Then a tremendous thing happened. Father built a two-roomed slab and bark hut on the flat on the other side of the gully, and on the other side of the world, as it was then. Grandfather came in with a load of stringy bark slabs and stringy bark poles for a kitchen. The temples are rotten, the campfire's dead, the possums may ramble trees overhead. I'm humping me bluey all over the land, the prints of me blue just sink deep in the sand. I'm out on the wallaby, humping me drum, and I can't buy the road where the sundown has come. It's northwest and west, all the ranges so far, to the plains where the sheep and the cattle station. Are. With the sky for the grass for the bunk, can it go back? Lawson's was a household name in Australia. He had over 200 poems and many short stories published, and his two books with A and R that sold over 33,000 copies. Yet, as is estimated by George Black, one of the Bulletin editors, in the 13 years since his first poem was published in 1887, Lawson had earned only £700 from his royalty. Behind them, bubonic plague was engulfing Sydney. Australian troops were serving in the Boer War, and the colonies of Australia were moving towards federation. With him, Lawson took the 18-year-old Miles Franklin's manuscript, My Brilliant Career. In Possum land the nights are fair, streams are fresh and clear. No dust is in the moors gambling overhead, neath western stars so It's close to shearing time So hump your swag and take the track And push for further out In days and drought The sky is blue
lost in London fog the glory of the day. The old sweet scent of wattle bloom is faint and far away. And in the same poem, I mind the time yeah, when I... That Hannah Thorburn, Lawson's spirit girl, was also occupying his thoughts. She'd been there to wave him off at the quay, and the story has it that he carried a note from her for the entire two years he was in England. The family moved to the English village. He's saying that I never have written of love, as writer of song should do. They that is fair and true. They say I know nothing of women or men in the field where love. And the face of a boy and a manner strangely wild and the great wide wandering inner seas dress and his heavy boots he drags to eternity and the warder says in a softened tone catch step where five men do the work of a boy with waters not to see. It is sad and bad and in useless. The great round church with its volume of sound where we dare not turn our eyes. They take us there from our separate hells to sing of paradise and weareth the thorny crown. The press is printing its smug, smug lies and paying its shameful debt. It speaks of the same. The clever scoundrels are all outside and the moneyless mugs in jail. Men do twelve months for a mad wife's love. Did you hear the children singing? All oh, my brothers, all oh, my sisters. Did you hear the children singing? Shine and the rain like they'll never sing again hear the little schoolgirls singing as our troops went swinging past brothers oh my sisters did you hear the children singing for the first man and the last as they marched away oh my brothers Oh, my sisters, shall you hear the children singing in the sunshine and the rain? Always come home again. There'll be tears of orphan children when our boys come home. Again. At the harvest time, they were Scots of the Riverina and to run from home was a crime. The old man burned his letters, 
the first and the last he burned. Abbotsford, Sydney, with the dear, kind and ageing Isabel Byers still fussing over him, helpful and considerate as ever. On the night train, the last poem from the... made a national hero with streets and parks named after him. And yeah. lots of big country and freedom's under the blue. Freedom's on the wall of the oh, don't you hate to light another fire and boil another belly. Our fathers toiled for bitter bread while loafers thrived and then ate land in spite of their devotion and so they came or if they stole a sent across the ocean Australia's a big country and afraid of something blue and she'll want the time and silly she's going to light another fire and boil another belly Across the mighty main, the chains have come to bind her. She little thought to see again the wrong she left behind her. Australia, she's just begun to boom her age. She'll the tyrant silly. She's going to light up another fire. Troubled much by lords when they was pioneering. But now that we have made the land a garden full of promise, old Grievous broke his dirty hand. Come, we must sing a rebel song. 